oceanal distances that have been have been travelled. And the idea was was that this individual who is this daughter who is in her sort of mid thirties in Seattle is with the the daughter in the book, you, desperately wanted to connect with her mother, but her mother is very reticent because of all the things that have happened, which I think is a very it's quite a Chinese trait at times, is to be reticent and to be somewhat, um, I would call it uncommunicative, but we can call it, uh, um, I think, uh, taciturn if you want. But, um, and for the daughter to say, well, how on earth did we get here? Why are things like this? Why did we not, why didn't I know this person or that person? How did we get here? And I think the, the idea was, was that that extra story tracked all the way back and basically ran in parallel to the story that you see now. So what I would do with that, I absolutely have no idea. Um, I haven't even thought about it, to be honest. But to me it was quite an important part because it was kind of the point, part of the point of the original tale, was to be able to look back and understand how tradition has changed and how people have moved emotionally um, and physically. Uh, I think. Um, the physical side to me, the physical movement and geographical is less important in a way than the emotional side because actually it's the emotional baggage one ends up often leaving for somebody else to carry um, and that's what I think is, is, is more important. Why the title uh, that you name All the Flowers in Shanghai? You know? It's an incredibly quick one to answer. The publisher chose that title. My really? title was Before You because it was the recount and memoir of previous lives and so the point was it was before you as it was addressed to the daughter but everybody agreed that it was a it was a, a weak title and I think they're right I'm, I'm not particularly good at titling things I have to say most of the things that I've created I mean, it's not many of them but the few things I've created generally the titles have been by somebody else I said why don't you call it this well that sounds really good so um, we tried a few other ones like the red mistress um, well, the white books, because she writes in these books at the end made out of cloth and they're white. And I quite like that. But it's a bit... Um, it's a bit uh, difficult to understand if you haven't read the book. So, All the Flowers in Shanghai seemed to me quite... A, it was a good title. It was a strong-sounding phrase. Um, and the flowers were an important part of it. They're a sort of gentle reminder um, as, as you go through the book. Um, and then that, just to go back to one of your previous questions, the flowers and the importance of horticulture was from my grandfather here, who worked for the government as a civil servant in a fairly senior position on the horticultural side. So a lot of the early trees that were planted in Singapore were sort of planted partly by him, his direction. And when we used to go round gardens, particularly the old botanical gardens here, he would point out, this is this and this is that. And, and that, that's, um, that actually is taken very directly from him. And Duncan, please uh, tell us, could, could you give us three points, lessons that you've learned in developing this book, you know, uh, and here at, let's say it, at Hyatt. Any, any three lessons? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when I'm sitting here at the Hyatt um, thinking about this, I think it's very simple. One is to be, one is to be very direct and to not get caught up as a writer or an artist, but caught up in your, in your art or in your writing or in your expression. That's what counts. So um, often people get too interested in playing the role of the writer or the artist or the filmmaker. And you need to, it's the work that counts. So you've just got to do the work. Um, secondly, is at the end of the day, this is an industry. And actually, the... the opportunity to sell books and to sell books people consider obviously the physical side of things but ebooks books whatever it may be that counts people have jobs to do people are being uh, um, people are earning their living from this industry and therefore one has to expect that there is going to be a large degree of um, commercial uh, responsibility and at the same time um, same time, a, a sort of market approach. So if you've written something that may be beautiful but actually not terribly uh, commercial, then unfortunately you're going to have to accept the fact that it's going to be difficult possibly to get a publisher unless somebody just loves it for what it is and is prepared to fund it on the basis that it may not make much, much money for anybody. Um, and I think there are commercial realities, so I think one has to be cognizant of that. And I think thirdly, 
is the issue of supporting the book once it comes out. Um, you know, my a film comes out, and actually, I've never been to. Have any ever been to one film festival of the film festivals that they've played at? Um, but somehow, with film, it's easier. The film plays, people watch it, they have a discussion, and, and it's very unlikely the filmmaker will come. Whereas with a book, people um, want to know much more. I think the, the film is film is slightly different in that I've said this before, and it's something I sort of thought about a few a months ago. But you take somebody on your own journey with a film. It's my journey. You see it, and you're like, okay, well, I can either understand or not. With a book, you set somebody else out on their own journey. So they experience, they, they, they finish the book, and they say, well, I, this is what I got out of it, and now I would like to know a bit more. What else is there? And that I wasn't so much prepared for. And, and I think you, as a writer, you have to say more about what you've done than simply as a, um, as a filmmaker, in a way. So, Duncan, I would like to, you to tell us uh, where we can get your book, and if you have a Facebook, please, you know, acknowledge if there is one, you know. Um, and and uh, viewers, please do join me and thank uh, Mr. Duncan for his introduction to his new book, uh, All the Flowers in Shanghai. And so let's say it at the Hyatt. Thank you very much, Robin. Uh, yes. It's available in Singapore at Kunikonia and I think at MPH and other bookstores. Um, and thank you very much. Well, thank you.